I come up with 70 volts. 70 volts, 50 amp hours. Now, 70 volts to me is close enough to 72. No, it's not 72, it's 70. But uh, I'll take it, I'll take the short losing two volts when I'm saving 25. Anyway, fellas, good morning. Good afternoon time, good evening, whatever the case may be. Because it may not be morning when you watch this video, wherever you're watching that. So, whatever the deal is, good morning to you. Alright, it is Tuesday, April something. I don't know what the hell the date is. <laughs> this is terrible. But yeah. Uh, I had, I've taken two days off because of my accident. And it's only a week later, but actually my leg got the feeling worse after it started looking better. But anyway, uh, listen to Dr. Wifey and in them two days, uh, taking off, my leg feels a hundred percent better and the swelling has gone down so far. Okay. Enough of that. Now, uh, for you, for those that haven't seen my video explaining my battery pack system, uh, I was just reminiscing watching it myself, seeing if there was anything I missed. And uh, that's a pretty good video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I have a lot of good videos. Unfortunately, I made them all very fast, uh, like a hundred videos in a month's time. And maybe I overwhelmed my channel. Where people haven't actually been able to watch them all. Maybe I'm making them too fast. I don't know. But anyway, I'm not going to stop. But yeah. Okay. Now. Uh, I will be getting back to the Super 73 build. And uh, modifying the mountain bike. The VV. Uh, but I came up with an idea last night. So I want to go ahead and uh, go over that real quick before I forget and not mention it now people have been asking me for a while uh mainly uh guys with zugos how to bypass the pedal assist or trick the pedal assist so they can throttle up to 30 miles an hour and um i was thinking that you could uh easily switch the signal wires the signal wire on uh pedal assist and the signal wire from the actual throttle but that's not actually going to work unless you use some diodes and that makes it a little complicated for the average person so i think i came up with a better idea okay check this out this right here is a pedal assist sensor uh that consists of a little wheel with magnets on it then this actual sensor itself and that's actually the sensor part the little black part right there uh the metal part is just the ring so it fits around uh your crank part uh and sits properly and spaces it you know the correct distance uh from this magnet how your pedal assist works is uh this goes around your crank, this little magnet part, and this part goes around your crank as well, but it's in a fixed position, whereas though this part doesn't move. So this goes around the crank, and uh, it's stationary, it's mounted, so this part does not turn at all, it just sits there. And like I say, this little wheel with the magnet that goes on your crank, and when that spins around, you see it has an arrow on it. As this magnet spins around, it sends the correct signal to your motor. I mean, well, to your controller saying that your pedals are moving, telling the controller that you want to go. And uh, then your controller gives a signal to your, your motor or sends, sends the correct voltage and amps to your motor causing you to go and the thing is most of the time it's uh higher voltage and higher current 
than your actual throttle would give you. Because on a class two, we all know that you can only throttle up to 20 miles per hour. If you want to go above 20 miles per hour, then you have to use your pedal assist. And most people hate that shit because they want to throttle up to 28 to 30 miles an hour without using the pedal assist. Okay, so I've come up with this idea. I haven't tried it yet, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. All right, let's say you remove your pedal assist sensor and the little wheel from your crank entirely. You, need, you remove this part and the magnet part from your crank and we're going to move it to it doesn't matter the front wheel or the back wheel but let's it probably will be easier moving it to the front wheel we're going to move this whole assembly to the front wheel this is going to mount on that on the wheel spoke side and we're going to mount this probably somewhere stationary like the fork. You see where I'm going with this? Okay. And how this would work is... Now, in order to regulate this pedal assist sensor, because I know you're like, well, how are you going to stop it? In order to regulate it, you need to wire in a switch on the sensor. And... You also should have your brake cutoffs wired up as well. I know a lot of people like to disconnect their brake cutoffs, but the brake cutoffs really is a good safety feature. And uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this modification unless you have your brake cutoffs uh, hooked up. Now, like I said, is you don't really need it because I'm going to also recommend a switch. You got to have a switch for this. But, uh, let's say, uh, I was going to draw a diagram of this, but I don't even know if it's necessary, but, uh-oh. Let's, let's, uh, let's just attempt to do that. Uh, matter of fact, let me use this to make the bike. Alright, this is one wheel. It's the back wheel. And it's going to be a crude drawing of a bike. I ain't an artist. This is the front wheel. And let me see something else with a flat edge. All right, let's see. I'm going to use this to make my front fork. Oops. Ignore that. Uh, this thing got to be perfect, but anyway. Okay. To your handlebars. And uh, I don't even know if drawing the rest of the bike is necessary, but uh, let's draw part of it anyway. That's your seat. And then uh, down here is your crank. Oh, man. I'm not a good artist, but anyway. Yada, 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 yada. Y'all see what that means. Okay, this is where your pedals are. <laughs> All right, now. I don't know if any of that got on camera. Because I'm all over it. Okay, now normally your pedal assist sensor is right here. And like I said, the wiring part. Uh, let's say let's say your controller is here. This is a crude drawing of your controller and the wire goes down This is your pedal assist wire and that that's that's this part right here It goes down to there and then uh, this little part right here Goes around there now when you pedal This wheel turns and like I said send signal to your controller and every time that's moving, uh, that's, you know, gives your motor power. Now, if we move the wire, uh, well, we're running up this way. Move the wire up to here and put that 
put this little sensor part right here up here and then put this little wheel on the axle somewhere or to the spokes or whatever it should work the same way and the only thing is when your bike is moving already it's going to detect that movement and it's going to allow you to go up to maximum speed now you won't have any control of the throttle over 20 miles an hour it will just be maxed out now the only time you're going to want to engage this is if you want to go faster than 20. if you're not going faster than 20 then you use your throttle as you normally would use it you know what i mean but it's when you want to go faster than 20 that we could have a little switch here and you turn the switch on when the switch is turned on then it will allow your sensor down here to turn on and that should take you on up to your maximum speed and not only will the switch be wired up to your sensor you will um you don't need to do any wiring for the brake cut off but as you know when you squeeze your brakes just lightly you don't have to fully engage your brakes so that it's stopping your bike uh, but if you just lightly squeeze the brake it's going to cut power and the only time it will stop this pedal assist sensor is if your bike is at a complete standstill as long as this wheel is turning even a little bit this pedal assist sensor is going to be trying to activate your motor that is why we need a switch up here now if you guys seen the high low medium switch that a lot of e-bikes have i recommend using one of those high low medium switches up there and like i said now this is just an idea i haven't implemented yet and maybe i'll figure out a better way to engage or disengage this but uh i see no reason why it wouldn't work okay like this I and mean, like i said the only time you're going to want to do this is if you're you know on a straight or you know you want to exceed 20 miles per hour anything under 20 miles per hour you regulate it with your throttle as you always do you know what I mean? And you don't have to use this all the time. It's when you want to go above uh, 20 miles per hour. So you, you throttle on up to 20 miles an hour. Your wheel is already rolling. Your pedal assist sensor is already kicked in. And all you would have to do is turn on your switch. When you turn on your switch, it's going to let your pedal assist sensor do its thing. And you know on a cadence sens sensor, it doesn't matter how fast you know it's turning just like when you have it on your crank doesn't matter how fast you pedal as long as it's movement your cadence sensor that's actually what this is a cadence sensor detects cadence detects when you're pedaling as long as it detects movement it will engage your motor so as long as you're coasting around and this wheel is turning, be it three miles an hour, five miles an hour, it's going to engage that motor, which is why you must have a switch to disengage it. And like I said, for safety purposes, you should have your brake cutoffs uh, connected. Now, I see no reason why this wouldn't work. And like I said, I, I haven't tried it. And reason being, I don't have enough bikes at my disposal to just be playing around with this type of stuff. You know, if uh, Frank, I don't even, Frank's pedal assist isn't even connected anymore. And I'm not about to wire up a pedal assist on Frank just to try this out. Now, if one of you guys at home still have a factory or stock Zugo because it was a lot of you guys asking me that 
And not just Zugos, other e-bikes that have, you know, that class 2 setup. And that's a whole lot of e-bikes. A whole lot of e-bikes will only allow you to uh, go over 20 miles per hour with pedal assist only. Now, uh, let's just forget about this for a minute. For those of you looking to upgrade and modify your e-bikes and put bigger controllers on your e-bike, that is something else you have to remember when you're buying a controller. Don't just buy any controller when you're trying to upgrade. You got to make sure that that controller is a class 3. Class 3 meaning you can throttle up to the maximum throttle. Because you'll be very disappointed if you buy a new controller and you only can throttle up to 20 miles an hour and you get it takes pedal assist for you to go any faster than that. Now, if you're doing a 72 volt MARTA upgrade, normally you don't have to worry about that. Because normally you're getting a big controller like a Sabaton or a, a Far Driver or any of those high power controllers. Even that controller that I recommended uh, like the I have on Frank. Any high power controller, most of those don't have that class 2 feature. But it's important if you're upgrading to make sure that your controller that you're about to order or buy is not a class 2 controller. Because if it is a class 2 controller, yes, you will only be able to throttle to 20 miles per hour. Now, I'm also getting ready to research how to uh, bypass that electronically. In fact, I know how. But I'm trying to come up with a way that's easier that anybody can do it. The way you have to do it now, you have to open up your controller and make some changes on the circuit board. And uh, not everybody is definitely not going to be able to do that. So I've been trying to come up with an easy way that anybody can do it. And uh, this is about as easy as it gets as for right now so just an idea uh hopefully somebody will try it out and let me know how it works but i'm sure it will work fine now when you hook up your switch you want to hook up your switch on the sensor wire you know your pedal assist has three wires uh you i mean the signal wire you want to hook it up to the signal wire the one that sends the uh signal to the controller you want to put that on the switch to sh turn that on and off. All right, fellas. That's it for today. Uh, I will be back on our build today. And that video will be going up later on tonight. All right, y'all. Deuces.